Bunny. Yes. Uh, put on your happy helmet, cause we're gonna talk Mama. sexual assault. Okay. Hey, Bunny. Let's talk Me Too. The movement known as Me Too has successfully destroyed the careers of a number of hardworking male assholes. So many, in fact, that it can be hard for for Joe and John public, Joe Joe and John and Joe John Jane jerk, and no one knows that Walter Paisley is born. <laughs> It can be hard for regular Joes like us to keep track of all of the men who have been ruined, which is what we will be doing here today as a public service announcement to you, the people. Let's do this. It's time for the Me Too Career Destruction Roundup. (laughs) Okay. And this week is a themed one. It's the Me Too Career Destruction Roundup Special Nickelodeon Edition. Really? Okay. Yes, my friend. The Me Too movement is dis- exposing creepos and sleazeballs in all aspects of business, including children's programming. And Nickelodeon is no exception. Apparently, the home of SpongeBob and Dora the Explorer is also the home of disgusting men using their power and authority to get freaky creepy with unwilling women. So... Oftentimes underage. Oftentimes underage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So a number of high-profile creators at Nick have had their careers and their asses handed to them. And I am here to to help you all get a handle on it. So let's do this. I have three people here that have recently been taken down from high positions in the world of Nickelodeon. No. Okay. And absolutely true. At first, I was going to add some, like, fake ones, and, up, oh, they got rid of Swiper. Yeah. Not only was he swiping things from Dora, he was also swiping panties. But, no, I decided to go 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 the serious route. These are three actual people that have been, uh, that have been taken down from high positions in Nickelodeon. Number one, Chris Savino. Bunny, I don't expect you to know. I, I, I don't expect you to know who he is. I don't expect no. most people to know who he is. Um, you might know the second person on the list, and I, I'm pretty sure you definitely know the third person on the list. Okay. But uh, Chris Savino is a big name in animation. In the last 27 years, a long uh, and distinguished career up until this point, he worked on The Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Lab, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Ren and Stimpy, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, My Little Pony, and he's best known for creating a Nickelodeon cartoon in 2016 loosely based on his childhood called The Loud House. Okay. And and it's all about this this family, and there's, like, one young son, and, like, about... 12 older daughters. Okay. 12, 13, 14, like a, like a large amount of of uh of older sisters this kid has. So it's all about this young boy dealing with this crazy life and and all of his sisters are completely opposite of each other, you know? Yeah. And of course there's only one bathroom. And it's crazy loud all the time, so that's the loud house. It, it has since become a big hit for Nickelodeon. They're they're currently they're getting close to finishing season three of the Loud House. It has been renewed for season four, and Nickelodeon. It, it, oh, and they're it, it's slowly but surely they're they're getting released on DVD. I keep seeing that every time I go to the store. Like a like a Walmart or a Target, I always see the Loud House there, and the kids go, "Oh, hey, the Loud House." And and now Nickelodeon, for a while now, it, recently Nickelodeon announced that they're planning a big budget feature film for The Loud House, and it's going to be coming out in theaters summer of 2020. Well, Nickelodeon might be rethinking the whole thing because, oops, 
looks like Chris Savino has been sexually harassing women for decades. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> looks like Nickelodeon. Uh, so so Nickelodeon had to fire Chris Savino from his own show, and now the Loud House will have to be super successful without him. And that's got to be weird to see your show about your life get huge without you, you know? But, <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. but also, you're a creepo that has just used your power to really uh, uh, ruin the lives of a number of women over decades in the animation industry. So sorry, not sorry. What, one thing that I, that I uh, have learned from this uh, uh, Me Too career destruction roundup is that the world of animation hasn't changed that much since Walt Disney in the 1940s, you know? Yeah. Because in the 1940s, it was like 90% men smoking cigars, working on these animated movies and cartoons. Uh -huh. And then you think, oh, well, it's 2018. Things are going to be different. Yeah, it's still a bit of a boys club, you know? Yeah. It's still a lot of a boys club. And not a lot has changed. So, uh, Chris Savino, sorry, not sorry. You're number one on our uh, career destruction, Me Too career destruction roundup, special Nickelodeon edition. Number whoa, two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, is no, no. Wait, 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 wait. We need, we need details on that. How pervy was he? Did he, did he masturbate into a potted plant? Because that's the high bar. No, no. But a number of women came forward, and he he, and yeah, and and suddenly his name was all over the place, and Nickelodeon was quick to fire him. There were details, but I did not go into the details because I did not want to know the details. Okay. I just saw a number of women came forward, and I'm like, good enough, <laughs> close close enough. <laughs> Let's move on. I've got more details for this next man. This name is a bit more well known. You still might not know who he is, but when I explain him, you will definitely know who I he is. This. What's going on? They're about to park behind me again. Oh, oh god damn it. Every single time. Number two is Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider, okay. He he was he was on uh that TV show. Forget it. Head of, head of the class? Uh no, I can't think of the one, one, one day at a time. No, 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 no. Schneider was the like horny super. Yeah. But, but no, Dan Schneider, it's a slightly more well known name than Chris Savino, but still not that well known. In the 80s, this fat, young looking guy, and I mean real fat, was a decent character actor. He was usually the nerd or the fat kid. Yeah. He was the fat nerd in Better Off Dead. Oh man, it's been so long since I've seen Better Off Dead. Okay, so there's so Better Off Dead Better Off Dead is the one with the French foreign exchange student and the French foreign exchange student falls in love with what's his name uh who stars in the film? John Cusack. Uh 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 it, they fall in love, but the French foreign exchange student is staying at the house of like the nerd, like the nerdy family next door. Yeah. And so Dan Schneider is like the fat nerd with glasses who who tried to like win over the French foreign exchange student. We ran out of ramen yesterday. Okay. If you if you saw him, you would know. He was also the fat kid on the ABC show Head of the Class. It ran for five seasons. From 1986 to 1991. Uh, so he, he yeah. was a well-known actor in the 80s and then in a bit of the 90s. And then he just got older and, and the acting jobs dried up. So he started creating live-action kids TV sitcoms. And oh my god, if you can think of any live-action kids show, then there's a 60% chance that fucking Dan Schneider created it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got a list of some of the shows that he had a hand in. Some, not all. Uh, all That, The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, iCarly, The Keenan and Kel Show, Victorious, Sam and Cat, Henry Danger. And he's still got a few shows that are currently on Nickelodeon right now. 
So these shows were all the brainchild of one man. But some of those names are pretty big. So like uh, 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 Keenan and Kel. Uh, feature Keenan and Kel, 50% of that was uh, 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 Keenan Thompson, who is on SNL. He is currently the longest reigning cast member ever in SNL history. He's been on SNL longer than any other person has been on SNL. Really? Yeah. And who and he got his start via Dan Schneider. Um Sam and Cat was uh Sam the blonde from iCarly and Cat the redhead from Victorious who ended up being super famous singer Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande got her start via Dan Schneider. A bunch of famous people got their start through Dan Schneider. Um, the New York Times called Dan Schneider the Norman Lear of kids TV. <laughs> that's a that's a fucked up title. <laughs> yeah, uh, the guy has a huge I, uh, Wikipedia page, but here's the interesting thing. No mention of his Me Too fall from grace on Wikipedia. Hmm. Uh-huh. But yeah, Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon parted ways over some really nasty pedophilia rumors and rumors of underage pool parties and all this like creepy shit. And uh, Dan Schneider's people said, oh, well, these are all lies. And yet Nickelodeon uh parted ways with Dan Schneider and also secretly gave him a seven million dollar payout to leave Nickelodeon. Really? Okay. That's some suspicious shit. Yeah. It's like we need to part ways, but I don't want to part ways. Here's seven million dollars. Can you please just fucking leave? Mm-hmm. You don't do that if if the if the person you're trying to get rid of is innocent, you know? Yeah. But um, a lot of this is like rumors and online rumors. Dan Schneider is, is convinced that this is all just he is the victim of of a baseless Internet smear campaign. So it's like, OK, so we don't have a lot of proof of of these things. But there are some things that we can prove. Here are some things we can prove. Dan Schneider had a habit on his Twitter account, Dan Schneider had a habit on his Twitter account of taking pictures of the feet and toes of his underage female cast members. Ugh. And then he had a Vine page. He had a Vine, and his Vine was filled with underage actresses' feet. Oh, okay, that's yeah, that's fucking weird. He, yeah, he had a habit. He was obsessed with his underage teenage actress's feet and toes. He was obsessed with it. And when you know that, and then you start watching iCarly, oh my god, there's naked feet everywhere. How did I not notice this before? <laughs> there's, there's naked girls' feet everywhere. Here's Sam. Oh, I've had a hard day. I'm going to take off my shoes, lay down on this couch, and put my naked sweaty feet right in front of the camera. Yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> and then when you realize that, you started realizing more things. Like, there's a lot of sexual shit in these kids' shows that you might not n- notice when you're first seeing it, maybe when you're like 10 or 12, but then you grow up and you're 20 and you go back and you watch an episode of, I don't know, Victorious or Sam and Cat, and it's like, oh my God, that was a blowjob joke. <laughs> oh my God, that was another sex joke. Wait a second, they're going to be doing uh, caroling. Why are they taking off their clothes? This is really weird. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, there's there's pedophilia rumors and it, it and beyond that one thing that we can 100 percent confirm is that dan schneider had a long-standing habit of sexualizing underage teenage actresses and that's fucked up Ooh, and destiny is here one half of D and she has something to add to this yes switch chairs though because this one scares me okay okay so adding into the dan schneider shit yes adding into the dan schneider shit okay I don't know if you have this in your notes, but I saw this thread. I don't know if it was on, it was on Tumblr, right? Yeah, it was on Tumblr. Tumblr thread. Apparently, there was this girl who was on internship with Dan Schneider, um, mm-hmm. working on various Nickelodeon shows, and I guess 
this girl had came out and said that he paid her to let him rub her feet in his office by themselves, which is kind of fucking weird. Yep. But that's that's it. Yeah, yeah. He was obsessed with feet. A really creepy. Like, yeah, really inappropriate. Yeah. So Dan Schneider's gone now. Uh, sorry, not sorry. You're a fucking creepo. So that's number two in our Me Too Career Destruction Roundup Special Nickelodeon Edition. The third one uh, is is a recent one. Uh, no. John K. John K. Also known as John Crick Falusi, the creator of Ren and Stimpy. Okay. Now, this is interesting. He's a Canadian cartoonist. He created Spumco Animation, and he created the legendary Nickelodeon cartoon Ren and Stimpy. And he is a sexual predator. He groomed two underage girls who are now animators who are speaking out against John K. But I honestly believe, no offense, I honestly believe that if you've seen Ren and Stimpy for one second, <laughs> this will not be surprising. Okay. Ren and Stimpy's a weird fucking show. Oh, God. Yeah. Really weird. I have no idea how this show made it on uh, Nickelodeon. But if you've ever seen, you go, oh, this Nickelodeon creator was grooming these underage girls to be his, his own concubine. That is messed up. And then you see Ren and Stimpy, and then you go, yep, okay, <laughs> yep, all right. <laughs> Not a surprise. Uh, that's how fucking weird Ren and Stimpy was. Ren and Stimpy was a weird ass show. Yeah. Uh, and and that is it for this installment of the Me Too Career Destruction Roundup. Uh, unfortunately, this will probably not be the last time we do this segment. Uh, probably uh, not. Because men are pigs. But uh, that is it for this installment. Uh, John. We John. Wait a second. Hold on. Huh? John. Crick Falusi. Wow, that yeah, John K. John K. We're John. just gonna call you John K. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. 